Now we're ready to start putting the V-groove bearings on the ZY plates. We'll start with this hole on the bottom left. Um, it uh, will be the, the one on the same side as the, um, the nut mount um, holes. So first what we need to do is get a 2.5 inch 3 8 screw, put a V-groove bearing on it. We'll put a um, thin washer and a medium sized washer. We'll put it into this hole here, making sure that the head of the screw is on this side. And then we'll put on a medium washer again, a thin washer for the inner race of the bearing, then a bearing and a nut to finish it off. And that one is done. So this bearing um, has, this particular hole has two bearings because this goes on the Y axis or the short axis. And this is the bearing for the Z axis. The Y axis will be rubbing against this rail here. And then the Z axis will go along this side. Now we're gonna put on a bearing on this side, which is only for the Y axis. We're gonna start out with a two inch, three eighths inch screw, a big groove bearing, a thin washer, and a medium washer all here. And then just a nut on this side. Now this one, this hole here is a, um, is for the um, Z axis only, and there's going to be a bearing on this side. First, we need to put on a uh, cross dowel over here and a two and a half inch screw. Okay. Now, we're going to put the, um, the V groove bearing on this part, which is for the Z axis. We're going to start with a two inch with a washer, and on the back, we're going to stick it through this end, and then we'll put on another medium washer, thin washer, and a V groove bearing and then a nut at the end. And the reason why we're doing it this way is so there's not much protruding on this side to scrape against the Y axis. To the other Z axis, we need a cross dowel first. Now we're putting on the, <coughs> we'll be using a two inch, three eighths inch screw again and add a washer, put it in the other side, another washer, thin washer, big groove bearing and a nut. Now these two are for the y-axis only to, um, to be adjusted against the y-axis rails. So we're going to start off with the cross dowel and two and a half inch screw again. And we still want to start the two inch screw coming in from the bottom. We'll start off with the bearing because this is on the other side. A thin washer, a medium washer, and put it in the bottom. And then we'll have another washer so it'll slide easily. And so this will be the top part of the, the Y axis rail. And then for the final one, we're gonna start off with a cross dowel, get our assembly back, put this one in underneath, get another medium washer, thin washer, big room bearing. And the reason why we're putting it in the screw in this way is so it doesn't conflict with any obstacles in the back. Okay, now that's on. You can, even though I've put it against snugly, you can still slide it back and forth. And even though it's tight, if it's somewhat tight, you'll still be able to uh, move it with the screw going against the screw inside. Okay. Okay. Before we put the ZY, uh, ZY plate on the, on the rails, we need to put on these um, nut mounts first because we won't be able to access the screws behind um, when we do this. So we're going to use one and a half inch screws and a cross dowel. You're going to want these installed pretty tight, so you don't have to worry about them later on. I'll put that on this for a second. And this hole is uh, grooved just uh, for any inconsistencies that happen in the wood. Uh, make sure they're together and they're straight. Now we can go ahead and put the ZY plate on the rail. And tighten them up as we go. Maybe two. Don't make them too tight because they won't roll. Okay, this screw was uh, was rubbing against the rail, so I need to either take this washer off or add a washer in here. And uh, personally, I would rather take this washer off because I like having the, the the assembly as close and compact as possible. So I'm going to just go ahead and remove this washer and remove this washer here. And this is the back side of the ZY plate. It's still going to be able to slide without a problem. You don't want to tighten it too much. And this gives it enough strength to be able to hold on. Okay. Now let's put it on the, the Y axis. Good. And the, a way to, to determine whether you need to tighten these, just take the, the bearing and see if it turns. Tighten it just a tiny bit and keep turning it. 
Now it's not able to turn, so that's tight enough. You can tighten this a little bit more if you need to. And I'll go to the next one. See if I need to tighten it. This one needs to tighten it a little bit. That's good. And make sure that it still is able to um, to uh, slide very easily. And as you um, as you have the machine work, the profile of the rail is actually going to have a slight V. It's going to match the profile of this um, V-groove bearing. And what it's doing is it's cold rolling the actual aluminum. And the aluminum is actually getting, gaining a little bit more strength along that, those, those two um, areas. And the bearing will also have greater surface area um, when that happens. As that happens, gradually, um, tighten these when you need to. Uh, there will be a point where the wearing or the, uh, the cold rolling will actually um, be minimal. It will stop happening after a while. And uh, you'll, you won't need to do that much adjusting over maybe a, a year's time, depending on how, how much you use the machine.